Welcome to Class Ranks again. Today we shall talk about the first nutrients, macronutrients. Macronutrients, as the name implies, macro meaning large, macro meaning large. And the macronutrients are made up of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. That is why you see the cassava and maize there, that is from carbohydrates, and then the fish is from protein and then the oil, the bottle of oil there from fats. So our three groups for the macronutrients are carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And remember, we eat first and foremost to satisfy energy needs. What are our learning objectives? We should be able to list the macronutrients, list the food sources for each macronutrient, describe the functions of each macronutrient, and explain problems associated with having excess or having less of the macronutrients. Yes. There are three groups, as I've mentioned earlier on, carbohydrates. We eat them first and foremost to satisfy energy needs, and each carbohydrate, one gram will give us four calories. Protein, one gram will give us four calories, and then fat, one gram will give us nine. So you see that fat is really energy dense, has a lot of calories on weight basis than protein and carbohydrates. That is why we should limit the amount of fat that we take. When we talk of carbohydrates, it's basically carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen coming back. And we get our carbohydrates from our plant source. When we, the sun, they use the sun through photosynthesis, which we learned from SSS and GSS. Yes, that is what gives us our food. So plant food source. So when we talk of the carbohydrates, basically we are getting them from our plant food source. And there are three types of the carbohydrates. We have the simple carbohydrates complex carbohydrates and then the dietary fiber. So we classify them into three, which you shouldn't forget. Simple carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates, and then dietary fiber. And when we talk of the simple carbohydrates, we have two types. We have the monosaccharide, which is the simple sugars, and then we also have the disaccharide, all of them called simple sugars. So the disaccharide is basically our common table sugar, and then the monosaccharide is glucose. A typical example is glucose, but we also get it from our fruits. We also get it from our fruits. And remember that when it is mono, it does not need to go through digestion. It can be absorbed easily into the blood. And that is why normally you see that at least when they run and they get to the end line and they are tired, they are given glucose solution because you don't need to digest it. But for carbohydrates, for disaccharide, you need to break the bond into two to get a simple sugar. One unit sugar, which is a glucose. Now with the complex carbohydrates, we have the starches, the starches. So when we eat cassava, yam, rice, it's made up of complex carbohydrates, which is known as, also known as polysaccharides. As you read tests, you come across polysaccharide. It's the same as complex carbohydrates. And for some tests, you come across oligosaccharides. It is also part of the polysaccharides, but some tests separate them, which has three to 10 units of, of uh, sugar units. And then dietary fiber, we use the word dietary to di differentiate it from the fiber that we use for our materials. And dietary fiber is very, very important. In some tests, you realize that dietary fiber has been added to the polysaccharide. But what you should notice that dietary fiber, it is not available to the human body because we cannot break the bones that they have. And we can divide the the dietary fiber into two major groups. We have the soluble fiber and then the insoluble fiber. Those that are called soluble are soluble in water and those that are insoluble cannot be dissolved in water. They however have important functions for the body and that is why it is important that we encourage everyone to eat a lot of uh, fiber. The insoluble fiber, they help to ab absorb water they also help to make one feel full when you are eating, and therefore you may not eat enough. So you see somebody who is losing weight, this fiber will be very good. And it also helps to prevent constipation. Yes, where do we get them from? Our food sources, 
Our green leafy vegetables are wonderful source, contumere is one. Then from all our legumes, when we talk of legumes, that is our beans, our nuts, they are also very rich. And then our whole grains, that is millet, sorghum, our local rice and maize, when they have not been refined, they are good sources of fiber for us, the insoluble one. And then for the soluble fiber, we get they play important role to lower cholesterol. And we know right now in Ghana, high cholesterol level is a major problem for us in Ghana and the sub-region. So we need to lower cholesterol. So by taking oats every day can help us to reduce the cholesterol level in our blood. It doesn't matter your size when it comes to cholesterol. Other foods that are also good sources of the in, of the soluble fiber, we have our uh, citrus fruits, our uh, citrus fruits. We have all kinds of citrus fruits. Yes, the picture there shows you oranges, grapefruits, tangerine, lemons, lime. They are all good sources of the citrus fruit that we can use. They contain a lot of soluble fiber that has a role to prevent us from getting high blood cholesterol. Yes. What are some of the functions of carbohydrates? Carbohydrates provide us with energy energy and we eat first and foremost for energy and preferentially the body would like to use carbohydrates for energy yes so it protects muscle in that it does not allow muscle to be broken down to be used for energy it also plays an important role when it comes to regulation of blood cholesterol which we just talked about which is dietary fiber which is also a carbohydrate yes proteins it's our next macronutrient Proteins and we get we get protein we get proteins from both animal source as well as plant sources. That is why you see on the screen the pictures from both plants that is legumes, nuts and beans and then also from animal source both fish and meat and eggs and their products are wonderful sources of protein. They are essential for for the body. They contain the amino acids which are the building blocks for building our muscles and there are 20 different amino acids that come together to make proteins and these are important for us to eat both plants or pl plant and animal source foods to get the proteins but there are nine of this uh, basic units amino acids which are essential essential and when you talk of essentiality in nutrition it means that it must be present in the diet because the body cannot make them so that is why it is important that we get the amino acids from the foods that we eat because we cannot make them in the body. These nine essential amino acids. The rest can be made in the body and therefore they are called non-essential amino acids. Examples of the essential amino acids are lysine, tryptophan and methionine. Lysine, tryptophan and methionine. Tryptophan, for example, is lacking in maize. So if you eat kinky alone without any fish, you are not doing justice to yourself. Or even see somebody, you need to explain to the person to add some small amount of beans or meat or fish to be able to get the essential amino acids. What are some of the functions of proteins? Proteins and enzymes. They help in all body reactions. So if you, you, you want to eat, the food must be broken down before the body can act on them. And the enzymes are needed for it's so one needs proteins. Proteins are also antibodies. They help to fight diseases in our bodies. Protein also is needed in blood formation, in blood formation, in our hormones that helps us to move around and so forth. We need, they are made from protein. For a child to grow, we need protein. That is why when a child is growing and the child is not getting enough protein, the child may develop kwashiorkor and or protein energy malnutrition. We can divide the proteins into two major groups, complete and incomplete proteins. And this is due to the amino acids that they contain. Those who contain all the essential amino acids are known as complete proteins, and those that lack some of the essential amino acids, which I gave example like the lysine, tryptophan, methionine, they are known as incomplete. So when we take maize, for example, it, is, it contains proteins, but they are incomplete because it lacks the amino acid tryptophan. Yes. So complete proteins are from the animal source foods. Yes, so that is the animal source, that is our fish and our meat and meat protein, meat products. Milk also contains, because milk is from animal source. But the question is how many of us take milk a lot? 
So we usually will get it from our fish and then our meat and meat products. And then the incomplete ones are from the plant source foods. They are from the plant source food, that is the legumes, the beans, the rice, the maize, and so forth. Because I gave, I used maize as an example, lacking like tryptophan. So for us to make good quality protein, then we need to diversify our diet, not eating just one food. So if you eat beans and, and kenke, you are able to make a complete protein because they will complement its side. The table that I have on the screen is showing different foods from different food groups, from the grain group, from the legume group, and then also from the nuts and seeds. So when you eat from two or the three groups at a meal, then you are more likely to get a complete protein. We should know that the plant proteins are not complete. So it is important to complement each other. That is why we shouldn't eat those of us who are fond of just eating kenke and shito, no meat, no fish, nothing. It is a wrong thing. We are lacking some essential amino acids. And even worse, when it is given to children like that, or even giving a child banku and maybe okro stew, no fish, no meat, it is the wrong move. We should discourage that. Yes. Overeating protein is not a problem in our part of the world. It is not a problem. But it might be a problem for people who have been diagnosed with kidney disease. And therefore, one has to be aware. When the body is suffering from kidney disease, then one has to go down on the protein foods. However, in Ghana, our major, protein, our major problem with protein is not getting enough protein. And most of the time, it is skewed towards our children who are under five under five. It doesn't mean that adults also don't have the problem. Some adults do, but we see majority in our children. And this manifests itself in a squash or core or marasmus. And together they are known as the protein energy malnutrition. And this is very common in Ghana and most developing countries we see it. So on the screen we see features associated with squash or core and marasmus. And we should note that sometimes we see a bridge between marasmus and kwashioko, and that is called marasmic kwashioko, where we see the child exhibiting some of the features of kwashioko as well as that of marasmus. The common feature that you see with the kwashioko patient is the edema, swollen up. And that is water. And that is basically because of lack of protein. I'm sure you all learned osmosis in the secondary school. Yes, water moves from a place of higher concentration to a lower concentration. And we need protein to create that gradient. But when there's no protein, when the water moves from the intracellular to the extracellular space, it cannot go back. And that is how we see the children suffering from edema. And most of the time, when they become edematous, they are looking big. Mothers think their children are growing fat. But that is not it. It is a, a disease, a disorder. It is kwashoko. And sometimes we also see the protruding belly. Sometimes we see the hair to be very reddish and very thin. That is typical of kwashoko. And then with the marasmic child, the child is actually starved. We see the child very thin. You can count the ribs. The eyes look big. You see the small body with a very big head. These are typical characteristics of the two disorders, kwashoko and marasmus. Yes, on the screen we have examples of children on my left i have a marasmic child you can see the ribs on my right is a kwashioko child now the last macronutrient which is fat fat and if you recall i mentioned that it has the largest or the highest amount of calories one gram will give us nine calories one gram will give us nine calories yes as compared to protein or carbohydrates so we see that eating a lot of fat you are more likely to gain more weight because it has the highest energy value. Yes, it is also important for us to note that alcohol, that most people drink that we don't consider as, far, as food, also contributes to the calories. Yes, and I'm sure you've seen people who drink a lot of beer. You see their beer belly. Yes, that is fat. So take note of that. That is why we are saying that we should reduce the amount of fat that we take because of the high amount of energy that it contains. There are three main kinds of fats, and we call them triglycerides, lipids, and steroids. Yes, triglycerides are basically the local oils that we use 
they are made up of the triglycerides, the palm oil, coconut oil, granite oil, canola oil, olive oil, soybean oil, all of them are triglycerides. And then the phospholipids, normally we don't have them, we have them in our meat and meat products. They are part of our cell membranes. And then the steroids, steroids, a typical example is the cholesterol. And where do we find the typical steroid? We find it in our meat and meat products. We also find it in eggs. The yellow part is also rich in cholesterol. Yes, so I mentioned that our common oils are the triglycerides. Yes, the, it is made up of a glycerol molecule that is what is on my left. That is common to all of them and to it is attached the fatty acid. So it is the fatty acid unit that differentiates the fats. But the glycerol is a common unit to all of them. It is the fatty acids that determine whether it is palm oil, it is granite oil, or it is coconut oil. Yes. We also classify fats that we use into three main groups. We have the saturated fatty acids. We have the mono unsaturated fatty acids. Mono meaning one. So it means we have one double bond. And then the poly unsaturated fatty acids which means it has more than from two upwards of unsaturation. So the more unsaturated a fat is, the better. And the more unsaturated it is, the more liquid it is. So the more liquid a fat is, it is the best oil to use. And we, we, we need to differentiate between fat and oil. Fat is solid at room temperature, and oil is liquid at room temperature. So anything that is solid at room temperature it tells you that it's a bad fat you shouldn't be eating that and a typical example is what we get from the the pork the domendo that most of you like yes the fat back it's not good we see it we think it is meat it is not meat because it is hard that is fat it is solid so if we can test it by putting any oil in the fridge it be, if it becomes if it solidifies then it tells us that it has it has some amount of unsaturated fatty acid and therefore it is not the best oil for us to use. Yes, so this diagram that you see on the screen tells us what a saturated fat is, a mono and then poly. You know, the poly has more than two double bonds. And then different fats and then the level of saturation. This is what this, the picture on the screen is telling us. Of late, there is what we call trans fatty acid and that has been a major culprit of heart and artery diseases. And why? How does this happen? This happens when we are changing the oils into the solid one, like changing the oil into margarine. You know, margarine did not come naturally. We have to add hydrogen at the factory level and Lever Brothers does that. And then we convert it into the solid one that we use as our spread. We use in our baking, all the cookies, the cakes and whatnot. Yes, during the process, there is transformation of the, of the positioning of the bonds, and this makes it into a transform. And studies have shown that it is even worse than the saturated fat. So one should go low on the amount of foods that are baked, and then also on some of these margarines and whatnot. So we should learn to read food labels and look out for fats that do not contain trans fats that do not contain trans fats, we should go low on them. Although we've said all these things about fat, it doesn't mean we shouldn't eat fat. Fat is important to the body. But as I said, we need to apply our science in making wise decisions. The body stores it as energy. So during starvation, fat, the body relies on fat to survive because the human body cannot store carbohydrates a lot. Only a small amount of carbohydrates can be stored as glycogen. And this amount even depends on how much muscle one has. So if you see the weight lifters, you see that they have more muscle. So they store more, they can store more carbohydrates. More carbohydrates as glycogen, unlike the rest of us who do not have a lot of muscle. And when you compare males and females, males have more muscle than females. And therefore, males are more able to store a lot of carbohydrates as muscle as muscle glycogen than females. So we need to go low on our carbohydrate because when we eat excess, it is converted into fat and stored. And that is how we become overweight and obesity. Yes, fat also plays an important role as a blanket. It helps us to feel warm during cold. 
That is why when new babies are, babies are born, the new ones, the fat that they have under their skin is called brown fat. That helps to generate more heat than the adult fat, which is more whitish in color. And then another important aspect of fat is that it also acts as a shock absorber, especially around our vital organs, the kidneys, the heart, the liver, so that if somebody gives you a good fine punch, yes, you can still survive because the fat will absorb that shock and it wouldn't get to, to you. And also, it is also important when it comes to formation of hormones and especially our vitamin D, which is also known as the sunshine vitamin. When it comes to digestion and absorption of fat in the body, fat is also needed. And one, fat plays an important role when it comes to the formation of bile. Bile, which is made by the liver and then stored in the gallbladder, also uses fat and cholesterol, which is essential. So fat, we need some amount of fat for this. And then when it comes to transportation of the vitamins, the fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, D, and K, which we shall talk about later on, also need fat. So without fat, these vitamins cannot be absorbed. That is why it is important that even when somebody is dieting, you cannot remove fat totally out of the diet. It is important that fat is there. So for your take-home, knowing the caloric value of all the macronutrients, that is carbohydrate, fats, and proteins, I want you to do this wonderful calculation and post it to me. So our next class will be on micronutrients. But make sure you do the reading so that as we discuss, it will make it easier for you to follow. So I'll see you next week.